Honestly, One Piece is the last anime I expected to get a Western adaptation. When I first heard about it, I thought, oh, this, is, this has got to be a terrible idea. If Netflix couldn't even handle adapting stories that take place in more grounded settings like Death Note or even Cowboy Bebop, which, come on, it's just a sci-fi future. It's not really dealing with portraying any special powers. They're bounty hunters. How could they possibly do One Piece justice? It seemed way too overambitious, like they were practically setting themselves up for failure. Yeah. I know, I sound really jaded about this whole thing, but can you blame me? Honestly, the bar had been set really low. Even though there were good signs, admittedly, that this might actually be good with the original mangaka Oda being so heavily involved, I still had little to no faith because time and time again, you see the original authors get involved in the adaptation and think, hey, this is a good sign, it's in good hands, but somehow it still gets butchered. Uh, it has a huge budget behind it? That still isn't an indicator that it's going to be good because there's been tons of projects with money put into them that have turned into huge, massive flops. I had a feeling that this was going to bomb and that I wasn't even going to get past the first episode like with Bebop. And then, after watching not one, but all eight episodes, I'm proud to say I was wrong. Now, I won't lie to you and tell you that this is a perfect adaptation by any means, but I also don't have enough issues with it to call it deeply flawed either. Usually the biggest and most primary concern when it comes to adapting fantasy stories like this is usually being able to capture the world visually. But that concern was quickly washed away as early as the first episode because for the most part, I think the high quality production nailed it, especially with the cinematography. It gave it the right balance of looking dynamic and vibrant in a realistic way without feeling like it was trying to make it look overly serious or gritty. It still felt like one Piece. Most of the costumes were pretty well done too. There were a couple of costumes that didn't translate as well to real life, but they were relatively easy to overlook. Aside from that, my only other visual concern going in were the fight scenes and how they would be able to capture the different abilities of both the crew and their antagonists that are just so unique without making them too jarring and by using cheap effects or CGI. But once I got to the Captain Kuro fight, those concerns were put to rest since they were able to capture his menacing speed and his blades in a way that didn't make it look jarring or out of place. So this kind of gave me an idea of how they'd be able to capture later fights if the adaptation ever got that far. Now, the biggest thing I noticed and the most important thing I noticed while watching One Piece live action that I think is what made it work is that I never felt like I was being taken out of it. I actively felt myself getting invested in seeing what was gonna happen next with the characters, even though I technically already know what happens. And that speaks not just to the quality of the production, but the believability of the characters and the actors portraying them. Because with other adaptations, I feel like it's just the actors trying to embody that character, but it still feels like it's the actor. Here, I could believe that these are the characters. Luffy felt like Luffy, Zoro felt like Zoro, Nami felt like Nami, and so on. And that was a big part of making me feel immersed. If there was any real issue that I had, it came with how the arcs were rearranged and condensed in order to get us so far in the story that we got to know all five of the Straw Hats within the span of eight episodes. And by that, I don't mean that the decision to cut content bothered me. I actually liked some of the creative choices they made to keep things moving, such as introducing Nami and Buggy a bit earlier by merging that storyline, eliminating Don Krieg via Mihawk, and even choosing to portray Nami a bit more cold and unfriendly since the beginning to hint at her underlying motivations that would be tackled later. But some of these decisions came at a cost. For example, most of the child backstories did not work for me emotionally. They just felt so shoehorned. And some of the acting of those, okay, those did take me out because they didn't match the same level of quality in the, in the current timeline. They also happened so consistently because it was condensed that you just saw them coming each time. So Cue the flashback. Unfortunately, it also felt like they were trying to get to all these big moments, but they were missing the weight behind some of them. Surprisingly though, even though Nami's arc was probably the weakest for me, her iconic help me line landed for me because of her previously cold attitude from the beginning, which helped to emphasize her vulnerability in that moment much, much more. I had just gotten so used to seeing her cold and unfriendly that seeing her vulnerable in that line really spoke volumes as how much it meant for her to ask Luffy for help. But tonally, some things didn't make sense, like the way Zoro's fight against Mihawk was framed, it just felt too serious and overdramatic, and Luffy overall felt weirdly underpowered throughout. Obviously, nothing is going to be perfect and the adaptation was covering a lot of ground, but I think what I learned from this is that the biggest factor with One Piece is capturing the charm of the world and that sense of adventure. 
You could argue that these characters don't feel like they transfer over as well to real life because with the over-the-topness of anime, you can get away with a lot more extreme character actions and still find it believable because of the drawings and the setting of the world. Some of the scenes and line deliveries did come off a bit campy when spoken by an actual person, but it wasn't many and they still managed to feel true to the spirit of One Piece in their earnestness. What the One Piece live action succeeds in capturing is the energy and sincerity of the cast's emotions to want to move forward to achieve their dreams and the joy of being in a crew that has each other's backs that would just do anything for each other. You can see it in their faces by the ending. And overall, I think the most monumental thing that this adaptation proved is that it can be done. With the right amount of work, in anime's essence, especially one as unique as One Piece, can be captured and made to work for a mainstream medium. I could totally get the sentiment that the characters should have been fleshed out more in the live action, but I also don't think it was super important to do that because it served the purpose of making it more accessible and getting a new audience interested in reading the source material if there was a high barrier before that kept people from wanting to commit to it. It kind of communicated the gist of what One Piece is. I don't think the adaptation is supposed to serve as a replacement for it, but rather an expansion of Oda's original vision, especially since the diverse casting matches what he originally had in mind. So in a way, it can help to enhance our understanding of the world by making it feel more real when going back to the source material. Or at the very least, it just serves to do what anime adaptations have already been doing for a long time, getting more people to go read the manga.